So this is our disc brake system for Series Land Rovers. Uh, completely assembled with a disc, a brand new hub, drive flange, nuts and bolts, all of that kind of stuff, wheel studs, uh, and all bearings internally. So this is a bit of a collaboration with design and development engineering in the UK, who make a who did a lot of the hard work in making um, a, a great uh, disc conversion for series. There's been there's a few out there, uh, a few different ones over the years that have used different system custom discs. The challenge is getting from the original hub or bearing carrier uh, to to something that can hold a caliper and a, and a disc. So these guys have made uh, a nice little caliper stand bracket uh, so you can take a defender rear caliper and attach it to this and the most important and well most interesting thing to me that they've they've done is made custom pads so this is a set of brake pads but importantly if you can see there's there's a little bit more space if you were to pick up standard defender rear brake pads the the actual pad would be a little bit taller and so these are a little bit shorter and it allows it to clear everything it needs to clear on the series Land Rover. So in our kits we ship uh, a set of pads and a spare set of pads. Um, price point is basically the same as any other pad, so it's if you burn through them and you're doing hundreds of thousands of kilometres in your series then um, it's, it's not too expensive to replace those. Uh, the great thing is, is of course that they're using standard Defender rear discs as well. So really standard Land Rover parts except for this one smaller wear item. The challenge with design and development's kit was that it came with the hanger, uh, the, the pads and this spacer. Now on, on the surface spaces in Australia are illegal wheel spaces. Now they're only really illegal if they're sort of you know, if they're removable. So you can bolt them on and, and technically they're part of the thing and you're not, incre you're not trying to increase the track. These don't increase the track. This width is a, basically an emulation of the width that the original brake drum would have been. So if you imagine the drums, you know, attached to the hub and it's coming out and it's, there's this much thickness. So the wheels are sitting in the same position and therefore there's nothing technically wrong with doing this. But at first glance, uh, you know, a, a tire shop or someone could see it as wrong, an, uh, an, uh, an inspector could see it as something weird, you could lose it, that would be horrible even though it was bolted in. Um, and spaces just feel a bit weird. The other, the other thing you have to do is, here's an original Land Rover hub, is you have to machine the hub, you have to make it, you have to cut away some of the material and get it machined to be able to fit all these components, fit the disc, disc has to slide on, all of these kinds of things. So you send it away to get machined, or design and development now do one of these that you can buy, but then you're shipping a very heavy part from the UK. In both of those cases, you're spending a fair bit of money to do that. Uh, and for us, we, we sort of did all the sums, and it was cheaper to basically build our own new bearing carrier or hub. So that's what we've developed. So solid steel you can see the thickness in particular compared to the original now of course what that is is the thickness of the original plus the thickness of the spacer or the thickness of an old drum so the wheels sit perfectly correct it's all machined nicely threaded it comes uh, we, we press in the, the studs so these are the m16 studs uh, used for wolf rim so it's a uh, 27 mil bolt um, M16 studs, uh, wheel studs that are used on defenders. So it's all sort of compatible. Uh, with that compatibility, that is, the, that is the one thing. You can't use the original series wheels. They just don't have the space to clear the discs. You need to be using wolf rims, so defender steel wheels or any, any defender wheel will, will fit. Uh, so we do a couple of things. We can sell you just the hub uh, with the studs pressed in, uh, along with the caliper hanger and the pads and then you can kind of source the parts yourself you can source the discs you can source the drive flange and all of those and the bearings and all that other kind of other stuff if you're wanting to build it yourself or we can sell you the whole unit pre-assembled um, so that's drive flange all the bearings installed uh, all the nuts and bolts everything there ready to basically 
bolt that onto your series. Now, there is, of course, brake lines and, and things like that that you'll have to contend with. We, uh, you could either use a, so you'll need a dual circuit master cylinder, of course, uh, so one, you know, one circuit for the front, one circuit for the rear. You can use an early uh, county uh, master cylinder, which is a, which came from the factory, designed to be drum rear disc front, so it has nice proportioning built in. Uh, you can also get an external proportioning valve, which is what we do. We use a Series 3 dual circuit master cylinder. We use a proportioning valve, uh, a Willwood one, which we can then sort of adjust the front rear bias. It also gives us output for a brake pressure transducer, which we use to send brake information to our motor controller to control regen braking. Obviously, regen braking is not a feature on uh, normal Land Rovers, so you might not want to worry about that. So there's a few ways you can do that. Um, the, you know, running the brake lines is, is up to you, but this is every part that you need. Um, we're seeing that this as being the sort of the most popular option is just get everything uh, pre-built, two sets of, of pads, which should last you a long, long time. We're not trying to break a very heavy car. Uh, the calipers, of course, everything you need to bolt in, just connect up the brake lines and you are ready to, I was gonna say go, but you're ready to stop, right?